What I want to do today is something called a design fiction, which is a, a sort of thought experiment in which you imagine a future at some distant point. You don't worry about how to get from here to there. You just imagine something exists, and you start sort of ruminating on what that thing would be like and what it would allow you to do. The particular design fiction that I want to focus on today is a dedicated, learner-specific information repository that builds up an ever richer profile of a learner's experiences and development by capturing data from all kinds of learning experiences across all kinds of environments, uh, online, offline, formal and informal, and, and offering those up to allow parents and teachers and ultimately the learners themselves to get a much deeper sense for uh, where that learner might most productively go next. If you are a teacher right now, you probably know less about your student than corporations know about their customers. If you get a new kid in your classroom, a uh, new kid joins your classroom, how much do you know about him? You know name, grades, some test scores, maybe a bit of gossip from other teachers. Maybe he had an older brother or sister who was a gem or a pain in the butt. Contrast that with what Facebook knows about its users, or Google. There was a story in the news a few months back about Target got into hot water because they sent a set of coupons to a high school student for cribs and baby clothes and stuff. Her father was furious, but it turned out the girl actually was pregnant. And Target could tell because of the stuff she'd been buying. Uh, imagine if, if teachers had that rich a profile on their learners. Imagine if when that student comes into your classroom, let's call him Ben, you find out Ben is good at spatial reasoning, suffers from a little, struggles a little bit with attention control, but he also likes animals. And you, you see in his learner profile that he went to the museum over the summer and he built this simulated dinosaur skeleton. It's pretty hard and complicated and only about 8% of the learners at the museum contribute, uh, completed that skeleton. You even get to see a picture of the skeleton. And then during the course of the year, you're watching Ben, and you see one day he's having a particularly fruitful interaction in which he is helping another student on a math problem. You decide to pull out your phone and capture that interaction and add it to Ben's learner profile. And then maybe in a few more years, another teacher looking through Ben's learner profile sees that interaction and uses it as a hook to engage Ben, who's struggling with math by then, with, with what it was he used to love about it, what it was that used to fire him up about math. Right now, capturing data about learners is like catching water in wicker baskets. Uh, the good news is that a lot of smart people are working hard to build systems that do a better job of capturing and retaining learner data, as long as those data are generated in formal learning environments. The bad news is that almost all of our time is spent in informal learning environments. This slide is from the Life Center. That's the Learning and Informal and Formal Environment Center. The ribbon of gold in the middle represents the proportion of our waking time that we spend in formal learning environments across our entire lifespan, from pre-K all the way through professional development on the eve of retirement. The ocean of blue around that gold ribbon is the proportion of our waking life that we spend in informal learning environments. Now, good teachers will work hard to engage with a kid's extracurricular interests, but, but even good teachers aren't omniscient. They often don't know what's happening in, the, in those informal spaces with those learners. The good news for our imagined learner profile is that there are a lot of stakeholders who are contributing to young learners' development. In addition to teachers and parents, there's extended family, there's uh, coaches, counselors, tutors, mentors, museum docents, park rangers, and all of these people can be having interesting learning interactions with Ben, capturing those interactions, and providing evidence of those experiences to the learner profile to help teachers engage with Ben in the classroom. Now, the, the sort of extracurricular life I just described sounds pretty spectacular, and it, the truth is that this informal space is both vast and vastly unequal. There are a lot of kids who don't have all of those stakeholders I just mentioned, but I want to be optimistic and say that almost every kid has some kind of learning relevant experiences in the informal space that really fire him or her up. And the good news for our learner profile is that we can capture those. And whatever they may be, we can document them. It could be playing games with friends, outdoors or indoors. It could be learning about cultural traditions. It could be making music. It could be making an arcade. It could be just making scary faces with your mentor. <laughs> whatever it is, we can capture those experiences and we can hook them into a student's learner profile and that can help teachers connect what Ben is doing inside the classroom with the kinds of things he cares about outside of it. 
This idea of connected learning or interest-driven learning, it's not new. It's, it's Dewey talked about it almost 100 years ago. But it's always been a little bit challenging to, number one, identify those interests outside of the classroom, and number two, figure out how to sort of force them into the formal curriculum, wedge them into what you have to get a kid to know on a particular day, particular week, particular quarter. Um, and we could probably imagine doing that with this learner profile. So we're, we're capturing the interest now. We're capturing the learning experiences. We could imagine some algorithms to try to map those onto a formal curriculum. But as long as we're thinking big, we could imagine that the learner profile helps us to design a curriculum for each learner based on that learner's interests uh, and proficiencies. And this could include everything from, from sort of tailoring curricular content to suggesting extracurricular activities, like maybe for a particular kid, it's music classes, or a museum exhibit, or a monster truck rally, or martial arts classes. It could be all kinds of things. And yeah, it means that what Ben ends up learning is going to be different from what Sinem ends up learning, which is going to be different from what Shauna ends up learning. And that's okay. In fact, that's awesome. Right now, what we have is we, we think, okay, I'm gonna give these kids a, a discrete canon of knowledge and skills, and then they're gonna have a great tool set and they're going to be equipped with the tools to go on and build expertise in whatever it is that, that interests them. That's a reasonable idea in theory, but it turns out that it doesn't comport very well with either the digital landscape these kids are growing up in or what we know, what we've learned in the last several decades as learning scientists about how people learn. First, the digital landscape. Um, we've, we've touched on this several times today. Simply giving kids a set of facts and skills, it's, it's never been a way to fire them up, and, and now it's even less of a good idea because the, the facts are at our fingertips, and the half-life of skills is shrinking. Uh, that's not mine, that's John Seely Brown, actually. That's the one attribution I'll give you. I didn't make that up. But, but the notion is, why would you spend time teaching kids a set of skills that are going to be obsolete almost as soon as, as they've completed the mastery of them? This is a wonderful example of the human brain. We are amazing at figuring out how to do what we need to do to solve problems we care about. Some villagers in India, they had to cross from one part of a ravine to another part of a ravine, and they got monsoons. So sometimes the water level is 20 feet higher than it is in this picture. They don't have access to very much by way of resources, but what they do have is these particular trees with these crazy root systems. So what they decided to do was coax the trees with, with bamboo and sticks and, and uh, string and stuff so that their root systems would actually grow across the ravines. They're anchored at both sides, and they form natural bridges. It's a beautiful idea of, of a human being, or a set of human beings, taking the resources they have around them to solve a problem that they care deeply about. Here's another example of the same thing. <laughs> the notion is that, that as people, we're very good at doing that kind of thing. What our brains are not good at, what our brains are very efficient at not doing, actually, is retaining information that we don't care about, that's not useful for any problems that we, that we want to solve. This is, this is why uh, you probably don't remember what color shirt the person sitting next to you on the last plane ride you took was wearing. It just isn't important. And it's also why a lot of students struggle to master particularly abstract things like algebra, let alone calculus, because it, it is not connected to any problems that they, they understand that they care about. I mean, it could be, and we, and we as math geeks, we want them to know how wonderful and powerful it is, but, but if it's not connected at the moment they're trying to learn it, they're not going to get it. In the future, we're going to have given up the notion that kids are going to have this trajectory in which they grab a set of skills and we're going to change it for the notion that instead of producing a set of well-rounded individuals, all of whom are more or less interchangeable, we, uh, we have a set of students who engage deeply with problems that they care about. And those are going to be different across learners. And it means that the learners are going to take different shapes. They're not all going to be well-rounded. They're going to be pointy and misshapen in interesting ways. But the net result of that is much better for the interdisciplinary, collaborative, cross-functional world that we're, that we're sending those learners out into. Because if you take a bunch of well-rounded individuals and you ask them to work together, you get a ton of overlap of competencies. You don't get that much synergy from the interaction. If you take a cross-functional team and you ask them to work together, you get a much greater reach. So the idea that we produce a bunch of learners who at the end of the process don't look like one another in terms of their skill sets and their dispositions towards learning is beautiful. It's what we need. So that's the basic idea. You have this learner profile in our design fiction. This learner profile exists, and it's capturing all of the information about Ben's learning activities across 
a ton of environments. And over time, those experiences, those pieces of evidence build up to form this rich mosaic of, of, of who Ben is developing into and, and what might be an ideal sort of career trajectory for Ben. And, and we might be able to sort of step back a bit and squint and say, okay, I get a sense for who Ben is, who Ben might become. That's the notion with the learner profile. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about a little bit about sort of challenges and some sort of tricky issues to deal with on the way there. Right now, already today, we live in an environment that soaks up data about almost everything we do. And by and large, we don't own or even control these data. But with this imagined learner profile, that's not gonna be the case. The learner profile will be owned at the outset by the learner's guardians, which means that I, as a parent, will get to see not only what happens when the kid is with me, but, but what's happening with my son all the time. So instead of saying, hey, Ben, what are you learning in school these days? I might say, hey, Ben, I saw the other day you were helping another kid with a math problem he was having trouble with. That's great. I liked how you did that. And then I can engage with him in the activities he's actually enjoying in a whole range of environments. And eventually, uh, so that, that, that learner profile is owned by the guardians with access given to other stakeholders, but eventually the, the ownership shifts and it becomes the learner's profile. It becomes a sort of super portfolio for the learner, uh, from which the learner can make arguments about competencies and suitabilities for various things. So if I'm applying for a job or for a college, I don't just produce a transcript or a resume. I produce whatever kind of portfolio I think makes the most effective argument based on a diverse set of evidence. Uh, it, could be, it could be achievements, awards, papers I wrote, presentations I gave, uh, transcripts, it could be test scores, it could be work products, it could be references, it could be whatever I think, however I think it is, it is most effective to say, this is why I should be in this position. And, and I am a learner as empowered to do that because all of these data are here at my fingertips. Eventually, we'll have learner profiles across learners. So not just individual learners through time, but we can look across learners and we can begin to see interesting patterns. Um, so we can begin to say, for instance, that um, given what we see right now about this learner's profile, this learner might really benefit from a particular kind of activity uh, or a particular mentor, an older peer who has a similar learner profile. Uh, we can talk to a, to a learner about possible futures. Given the kinds of things you're interested in, there are some other people who have had similar trajectories and they've done really well in these spaces. Now, what we have to be careful about is not to treat those possible futures as if they're destinies. And in fact, one of the great benefits of the learner profile is that we can begin to look across learner profiles at cases where students have avoided dismal destinies. So maybe Ben's learner profile is one that looks like one where something like 85% of the kids who have shown that kind of profile have struggled. And what we can do is we can mine information across those profiles to focus on the 15% who succeeded and begin to steer Ben in that direction. Another issue is we're gonna be collecting evidence of a whole host of really, really broad and diverse learning experiences, and not all of them are gonna be equally relevant to all people. Um, when I was an undergrad, I was particularly proud of the fact that I was an undergrad at Stanford, and I thought everybody would be proud of that fact, and then I worked construction one summer, and I realized that to this particular set of peers, my experiences in college were nowhere near as valued as the ability to weld. Uh, college kids, I mean, you take them or leave them, but, but good welders, they're priceless. They're hugely important for a pipeline construction, which is what we were doing. Now, I didn't learn to weld that summer, but I did learn how to throw pipeline skids on and off of trucks pretty well. Uh, and that's a, that's a learning experience that a certain set of people might value. Not, not the people in grad school necessarily, but there's, there are certain communities for whom different kinds of learning experiences are valued. So the learner profile is broad enough to capture those and the, the evaluators can decide which, which of those experiences are relevant for the particular kind of evaluation they want to make. Now, everything I've said today is just a preliminary sketch. There's, there's a ton of issues to be dealt with. There's sort of pragmatic issues like data security, uh, formatting, standards, aggregation, and there are theoretical issues like uh, how to reconcile different value systems that different communities might hold, or um, how best to make the information in a learner profile useful to the particular learner and his or her parents. Because it's not very useful to say, for instance, your child is in the 62nd percentile for X. What the hell do I do with that? I don't know what to do with that. What we could say instead is, your child is in a place where a really useful next thing for your child to work on is Y. Um, 
So again, the idea with the design fiction isn't that I can map out how to get from here to there, it's just if we spend time thinking about a profile like this, we think about this thing as a goal that might be worth achieving, then once you sort of flesh that out, you can begin to look at how you might get from here to there. And the good news is we're not as far from that as you might think. Um, most of the impediments are sociological, not technological. Uh, and there are even good examples out there of work being done that's in this direction. There's a, there's a group called DIY.org that allows young kids to document their sort of building projects as they grow through time. So it's a particular subset of capturing my learning experiences. There's also a group, uh, the Common Educational Data Standards, that's trying to work on a giant framework, an all-encompassing data framework that will allow you to, to capture all sorts of learner-relevant data in a way that, that sort of moves across time. So the notion is, we can get there, and, and if the idea is one that, that resonates, um, I think we can spend time thinking about what we might want to do to get there. And I think this particular learner profile, this, this mosaic that we're going to be building, something like this will exist in 20 years. The question is, who will build it? Uh, will the ownership be in the hands of corporations who are capturing everything they can about user behavior in order to better sell things? or in the hands of, of giant government agencies who are trying their best to, to manage an enormous bloated bureaucracy, or will it be something that we can build so that it's in the hands of actual learners and their families and the stakeholders around them? That's, that's the hope that I have. So that's all.